Hey everyone, Mitchell here from thehockeyrefbook.com. This video is going to be about lines person positioning in the three official system. Now, as we go through this information, remember that everything in this slideshow, everything in this, this video is complemented by the things that you find in this book. And when you see references at the bottom of the slides to page numbers, it's referring to things that are in this book. Now, of course, not everything that are in, is in the book is in the video and not everything that's in the video is in the book. So it's really complementary, and different ideas will flow together, together to give you the best opportunity to have success as a lines person when you're officiating a hockey game. Now, remember that there's a whole host of skills that we're talking about in these different videos. There's positioning, which is a focus of today's video. There's procedures, which is all about stopping play and managing stoppages. Game management, which is about putting those together and then also adding other skills to manage a hockey game, not just about impact penalties, but including impact penalties. And then there's professional skills, which is all about the things that are around that pyramid and around that, those, those main three skills. In this video, of course, we're going to be talking about positioning. Because we're talking about lines people, we're going to be talking about Blue line positioning, pursuing the play, choosing to go up the ice, and covering for the referee as the play progresses. As always, as you go through this, feel free to hit pause and maybe just close your eyes and try to imagine a skill and what it would look like on the ice. Because if we can build neurons in our brains, we're going to have more success when we're actually applying the skills in a real hockey game when we're in a hockey arena. We're going to start the same place I start my other positioning and procedure videos. We're going to start at a centerized face-off because it's just a place to start. So when we take a look at this, this image here, you can see the lines people are lined up at either blue line, the referees at center ice, and when that puck gets dropped, we're going to imagine that the face-offs went back to the right side of the screen and then the defense person plays it up to the far line. L1 is not going to move from her spot. L2 will just follow that play up the ice uh, in order to be in position as the play moves up the ice to be ready to cover the blue line if something occurs where L1 has to leave. So as we're moving up the ice, of course the goal of this is to kind of tell a story about how you move on the ice as the play moves back and forth to either end zone. So the puck is now moved up to that blue line, L1 is in a position to make a call about offside or not offside, and then that puck goes into the zone. Now at this moment, L1 is going to move back outside the line because that's what working the line is. If the puck's in the zone, you're outside the blue line. If the puck's in the neutral zone, you're inside the blue line. The other liner is going to come up, standing about lined up with the neutral zone dots and to take a role as the back liner, uh, ready to step up if L1 needs to get off the line. Remember that as you are working the line, as you're working the line, you're always with your body square to that puck. You're never with your back to the boards, unless the puck is straight down the blue line from you, but you're always square to that puck. It's like you have a, a rope tying your belly button to the puck, and it just moves you back and forth facing that puck, which makes it easier to get out of the way and react to the play as it, as it develops around you. The referee, of course, is down there at half piston because the puck in this example is in the far corner here. So let's talk about switching lines. Now let's imagine that what happened was the puck went from this corner here all the way over to the other side of the ice and then it continues up the boards and they start battling for the puck right here beside L1 who currently owns this line and is responsible for making offside calls at this line. Now the front liner, in this case L1, is going to make a decision that the puck is in their feet and they're not in the best position to make a call or they're going to get in the way of the play. At which point that front official, L1, is just going to back up. It's just going to back up. And L2 is going to identify that L1 has left the line. This happens very fast. And L2 will step up and take that line. And that's how switch switch happens. The liner who owns the line decides to leave because the puck's in their feet. The back liner just steps up and takes it. And it's really, it's a dance. You have to have a lot of confidence in your partner and, a, and good awareness of what your partner needs in that moment to know that you're going to switch lines. And I already alluded to this, but the most common reason for switching lines is going to be a puck battle right beside the front liner. Okay, so this puck was, there was a puck battle happening 
right here, but then the puck ended up going back down into the zone, right? So the puck's now out here, but we have to think about what's going to happen when that puck breaks out. So you'll notice that L2 now owns the line. They have not switched back because they don't have to. L1 is now the back official, the back liner. The puck has went down uh, below the net, below the, the goal line. Now let's think about the two situations that might happen for the puck moving up the ice. This first situation is that the zone exit, the breakout, is going to happen on the opposite side of the ice from L2, the front liner. So we'll just do that. Now in this case, where the puck goes on the opposite side of the ice, as soon as L1 reads that that puck is leaving the zone, L1 can also leave this position lined up with the dots because we know that L1 is not going to have to cover for L2 because the puck is on l one side of the ice, L2 is not going to have to move away from her line because the puck's not going to be in her feet. So L1 can immediately start to back up to get to the far blue line in order to be ready to make a call of offside or onside. Of course, once that puck's in the neutral zone, L2 is going to work the line and get inside the zone, inside her blue line, and uh, the referee is going to start to move up the ice. L1 is paused here. But really, in this situation with the puck moving up the ice, L1 would keep moving towards their blue line. Here's the other situation. So let's imagine that in this circumstance, in this circumstance, the puck goes back into the zone rather than continuing up the ice. L2 is going to work the line, get back outside. L1 is going to come back down to that position lined up with the dots. This time, the defensive team makes a breakout to L2 side of the ice. We'll just pause right there for a minute. You can see the referee is getting ready to move up the ice because the breakout is happening. We're paused. At this moment, L1, right now, if the puck was on L1 side of the ice, would be heading up the ice to the other blue line. But right now, because the puck is on L2 side of the ice, L1 still has to be ready that this puck bounces over here, and then there's a battle here, and L2 wants to leave that line in order to uh, get away from the play if it gets if a battle's happening around her feet. So L1 has to hold this situation a little bit longer. Once that puck leaves, once that puck has clearly left the zone, L1 is now going to head up the ice. L2 can take an inside the zone position. And as that puck continues up the, the ice, uh, L1 will go to the far blue line. So the puck is now in the neutral zone, right? We can see the puck right down in this area here. The puck's in the neutral zone, they're battling for it. You'll see a couple of important parts. L2 and L1, they're diagonal from each other. You'll also notice that they haven't stopped in the neutral zone. So the lines people are always going to be moving through the zone to one of their blue lines. You're never going to stop in the neutral zone. Uh, you're either moving towards a blue line or you're at a blue line. So just because the puck's here doesn't mean that L1 is going to stop up here by the benches. L1 is going to get down here to her positioning inside the blue line. So the puck has now moved down the ice. Uh, it's now set up in the far end zone, right? It was in the neutral zone, but now it's down here. Now we're just setting up in the same way we were in the other end zone, but now L1 has become the front official, the front liner, and L2 has become the back liner. Referee's now at half piston because the puck's on the far side of the ice. So we're set up in the same type of way. Again, working the line, very simple set of rules. If the puck's in the zone, both the liners need to be outside of the blue line. If the puck is in the neutral zone, both liners are going to be on their way to the inside of the blue lines or at their blue line. That's working the line, right? And it's just, just really important to make sure that you're able to get out of the way of the puck uh, when that zones that pucks in that end zone. So we now know what it looks like when the puck moves up the ice. We know what it looks like in the end zone. But we're also going to have to think about what our role is when we're covering for the referee. Now the referee in the three official system is skating the length of the ice back and forth, back and forth with the play. They have various strategies to not run out of energy. But there's going to be reasons why you have to cover for the referee including the referee's tired because the play has been going back and forth. You have to make sure that you as a liner can be in position to make a judgment about goal or no goal if the referee can't get there. A uh, referee is tied up behind the play by falling down or dealing with players, right? Something's going on behind the play. Referee needs to deal with safety. 
or there's a fast break, there's a stretch pass, and it's just it's impossible for the referee to move as fast as the puck, so the puck gets off the ice much faster than the referee does. So those are reasons why the liner covers. Now, there's two parts to this. Once you've decided to cover, there's going into the end zone, and then the second part is leaving the end zone. So once you've identified you have to cover for the referee, once you commit, you finish the cover. So don't go into the top of the circles and stop. You're gonna go down to the piston system once you go into that zone. You don't wanna get caught going halfway in. Once you go in, get to the piston system. Number two, use the piston system just like you would in the two official system or if you were refereeing the game. The only signal you're gonna use in that end zone is you're gonna point a goal. If there's anything else, like anything else for a signal, uh, you leave it alone. So if there's a goal, you're going to signal the goal and then the, uh, the referee can blow their whistle to stop play. But the only thing you're going to do in that sort of circumstance is signal a goal if it happens. Otherwise, you're not making any signals. So we're in the end zone, but then the referee, there is no goal and the referee gets to the end zone eventually and we need to be able to exit. So there's two ways we can exit the zone after covering for the referee. If you're on the opposite side of the ice from the referee, the referee is going to come into the zone and take up some type of end zone positioning, the piston system, at which point you can go back to home base, make sure it's safe to exit, and then once it's safe to exit, you just head up the boards and exit the zone. If you are on the same side of the ice as the referee, you're going to come back to the boards to kind of a modified home base position. Generally, you'll drop below home base to give the referee access to where she wants to go. And then once it's safe to do so, usually when the pucks went to the far side of the ice, you're going to head up the boards and exit the zone. So it's really, how you exit the zone is really determined by if you're on the same side of the ice as the referee or the opposite side of the ice. Once you get back to your blue line, you just nod to your partner, talk to your partner, make a hand signal to say you're taking your line back and your partner is gonna leave, leave the line for you to uh, take back. So, that is the positioning basics for a lines person. We have seen blue line positioning, how to move up the ice, how to switch lines, how to manage play in the neutral zone and where you want to be. And then we've also talked about covering for the referee. Till next time, know your job, do your job. Have a good one.